programming future value with the graphing calculator. In all the applications in algebra in real life, few are more helpful than this formula, the formula used to calculate future value. In this lesson, we're going to identify each component of the formula. Then we'll program the formula in the TI-84 calculator. And finally, we'll explore different uses of this formula. Many of the uses are outside of determining the future value of money and give this formula much broader practical application. This two-letter variable here, FV, stands for future value. It's our dependent variable and is the final calculation after plugging in values to the right side of the formula. This letter P stands for principal. It can also be called the starting or beginning amount. This letter R stands for the rate. Verbally, this number is usually given as a percentage, but in the formula that percentage is converted to a decimal by dividing the percentage amount by 100. This letter T stands for time, and when it comes to money and many other applications, this number is usually given in years. And finally, this number N, occurring in two places, is the number of times compounded or calculated within a single unit of time. If it's just compounded once a year, the number would be 1. For monthly compounding, the number would be 12, quarterly compounding would be 4, daily compounding would be 365, etc. In each use of the formula, this number will be the same. We'll see how this works later on. We'll now proceed to phase 2 of this presentation, writing the calculator program for the formula for future value. Press the program key between the apps key and the bars key. Arrow twice to the right to the new submenu. Press enter, which accesses the Create New, option 1. Note the blinking alpha cursor. Enter the name of your program up to 8 characters in length. I entered FUT value to describe future value. Press enter. The blinking cursor next to the colon tells us that the calculator is waiting on us to enter program code. Press the program key. Arrow once to the right to the input output submenu. From here, arrow down to option 8, the clear home option. Press enter. Alternatively, instead of scrolling down to option 8, then pressing enter, you could have just pressed 8 to save keystrokes. Press enter again. Now the calculator awaits our second line of code. Press the program key. Arrow once to the right to the input output submenu. Press enter to choose option 1, the input option. Prepare to enter a string of text by pressing the second key then the alpha key below it. The blinking alpha cursor tells us that we are in alpha lock mode. Enter an opening quotation mark by pressing the plus sign key on the right side of the keypad. Enter the text spelling out principle. Note the way the word is spelled with AL at the end. This is the correct spelling of a word that is commonly misspelled or at least I have misspelled it often. Press the alpha key to turn off the alpha lock. Access the test menu by pressing the second key, then the math key just below the alpha key. Press enter to choose option one, the equal sign. Create a blank space by pressing alpha, then the zero key at the bottom of the keypad. Make a closing quotation mark by pressing the alpha key, then the plus sign key at the right side of the keypad. Press the comma key directly above the seven key, Enter P by pressing the alpha key, then the number 8 key with the green P above it. Press enter. Press the program key. Arrow once to the right to the input output submenu. Press enter to choose option 1, input. Next, enter the text as shown. PCT stands for percentage. Remember that you can create an equal sign by pressing the second key, then the math key, then press enter. Enter a comma. Again, the comma key is above the 7 key. Create the letter R by pressing the alpha key, then the times key on the right side of the keypad with the green R above it. Press enter. Press the program key. Arrow once to the right to the input output submenu. Press enter to choose the input option number 1. Enter the string of text as shown inside quotation marks, compound n equals, meaning the number of compounding events within a time period. Enter a comma. Enter the letter N by pressing alpha then the log key with the green N above it. Press enter. Press the program key. Arrow once to the right to the input output submenu. Press enter to choose input option one. Enter time equals 
inside quotation marks as shown. Time in this formula will usually be years, but could be another time unit such as hours or days depending on the situation. Create the letter T by pressing the alpha key, then the number 4 key with the green T above it. Press enter. Enter the formula for future value exactly as shown. Pay special attention to get the parentheses correct. Note the R divided by 100 to convert percentage to a rate that will work in the formula. Press the storage key above the on key. This gives us a little arrow to the right. Enter the letter F for future value by pressing the alpha key then the cosine key. Press enter. Press the program key. Arrow once to the right to the input output submenu. Arrow down to option number three, display. Press enter. You could have just saved a few keystrokes by just pressing three. Enter the text as shown. Future value is inside quotation marks. Press enter. Press the program key. Arrow once to the right to the input output submenu. Arrow down to option number three, display. Press enter. Enter the letter F by pressing the alpha key, then the cosine key with the green F above it. Press enter. Congratulations on writing your future value program. Now we're ready to go to phase three of this presentation, applying the program. Let's prepare to use the program by pressing second, then the key next to it with mode quit. We go to our new program by pressing the program key. We see our new program at number three. Scroll down to program number three. Press enter. Press enter again. For this usage, we'll have a starting amount of $1,000, an interest rate of 5.5%, an annual compounding, and a look at a five-year investment. We enter 1,000 for $1,000. Press enter. Enter 5.5 for 5.5%. .5 press enter. Enter 1 for annual compounding. Press enter. Enter 5 for 5 years. Press enter. We get a future value of $1,306.96, which we'll write off to the side. Now we'll clear the screen by pressing clear. Now we'll leave everything the same except that we'll change from annual to monthly compounding by entering 12 for n instead of 1. Press enter. This time we get $1,315.70, about $9 more from monthly compounding, which we'll write off to the side as well. Press clear to clear the screen. Now we cannot exactly do continuous compounding but can make a very close approximation if we put in a very high number for n. I put in 1 million. Press enter. We get $1,316.53 for continuous compounding, less than a dollar more than monthly compounding. I mainly wanted to give you a good idea of what happens with changes in compounding periods. Let's consider another type of application of this formula. A biologist starts with one cell at 8 a.m. If that cell reproduces by cell division every hour and each generation continues to reproduce at the same rate, how many cells will there be at 8 a.m. tomorrow morning? That single cell will be a principal or starting amount of one. A cell reproduction by division would be a 100% rate of growth and n for compounding would be 1 for once every hour. And finally, since we need to find the number of cells 24 hours later, we set it time to 24. We press enter and get this value for the number of cells, quite a sizable number, 16,777,216. Let's try another type of situation, population growth. The population of the United States today is 300 million. If the population growth rate averages 1.3 percent annually, what would you expect the population of the United States to be 12 years from now? Here are all the numbers entered. The starting amount of 300 million, the percentage rate of 1.3 percent, the compounding period of 1, and the time of 12 for 12 years. Press enter. In 12 years at that rate, the population will be a little over 
350 million. We'll look at one last type of application. If a car worth $19,000 today depreciates in value at a rate of 16% per year, what should its value be eight years from now? The principal or starting amount is easy, $19,000 for $19,000. The rate might be a little tricky. It's negative 16% because it's decreasing at a 16% annual rate. So make sure when you have decay or decline in the situation to use a negative sign out in front of the percentage. And the N for compounding is 1. And the time is 8 for 8 years from now. Press enter and the value of the car eight years later will be a little over $4,700. This has been Programming Future Value with the Graphing Calculator. Thanks for viewing.